Welcome to Poland Daily History with me, Nicholas Richardson. And in this series of episodes, we're going to do some comparative history. We're trying to link events of today with their historical roots in previous ages. And I'm delighted to have with me in the studio Adam Starzynski, our expert in all things historical and Polish, to help me, guide me even, through this journey. Adam, welcome back. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. Now, of course, the world is absorbed by the last years, and now we're sadly just past the first anniversary of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And one of the countries which has perhaps provided the most enthusiastic, enthusiastic is perhaps not the quite right word, but has been the most stalwart mm. in supporting Ukraine, sending aid and military hardware to Ukraine, has been Poland. Why particularly was Poland so keen to become involved? Yes, this is uh, definitely one of those issues that uh, in recent months uh, has been at the forefront of international politics. How much should the international community, this new group of Western allies, if you would say so, even though there is also help coming from other parts of the democratic world, uh, countries such as uh, South Korea, Japan, uh, are also helping, maybe not by sending directly military aid, but uh, a lot of humanitarian aid, uh, financial aid, uh, support on political arenas uh, such as the UN, also comes from those countries. Uh, so it really is a uh, global effort, uh, but at the forefront is, when it comes to military aid, it's the Western Alliance, which consists more or less of, of NATO countries, uh, together with uh, this little closer, uh, smaller group uh, or circle, uh, which consists of basically the Anglo-Saxons, the uh, Americans and uh, the Brits, uh, together with this uh, group of uh, Central Eastern European countries that have themselves experienced uh, Soviet occupation and uh, uh, Russian duplicity, if I may say so. So uh, the Baltic states, uh, Finland, uh, Poland, uh, Czechia, Slovakia, th these are the countries that have been sending uh, the most military aid if we look at uh, a per capita basis when it comes to uh, GDP. Uh, of this uh, last group that I mentioned, uh, Poland is the largest country with uh, nearly 40 million inhabitants. Uh, over 30 years after the fall of communism, it has had a growing uh, economy, uh, which has allowed it to also uh, invest in its uh, armed forces. Uh, it also had quite a lot of uh, Soviet-era gear uh, from uh, the 70s and 80s, sometimes even older, uh, that uh, has proven to be very uh, efficient in uh, Ukrainian hands. Uh, the Ukrainian soldiers naturally had access to uh, the same type of equipment uh, as they were part of the Soviet Union up until 1991. Poland was a part of the uh, Warsaw Pact as, as a Soviet satellite state up until 1989. So we had the same military hardware and uh, the military weapons that we provided Ukraine with, they could simply start using straight away without having to have uh, weeks or months of uh, training on them. So we have all followed the saga in, in, in recent months uh, with, for example, the Leopard 2 uh, tank coalition, yes, uh, in which uh, Poland really played uh, this role of being uh, a catalyst, you could say. It was the country that uh, came out first and, and said that this coalition has to be created that Poland is willing to contribute with, it o with its own uh, Leopard 2 tanks and starting to put pressure on Germany, as Germany is the country that has um, built uh, the Leopard 2 tanks and uh, they have some uh, rights to uh, intellectual property, you could say, in, in, in military terms. Uh, so they have to agree to all other countries sending those tanks to, to Ukraine. Uh, Poland was very vocal about that issue. Uh, sometimes uh, it was not received well <laughs> in, in Berlin that, uh, that Poland would be putting this pressure. Uh, now, in the recent weeks, uh, Poland became the first country to announce that they are sending uh, fighter jets to Ukraine, uh, the MiG-29s, another uh, Soviet-era weapon that Poland had in its, uh, in its arsenal. Uh, later on, Slovakia announced that they are also sending uh, 13 of their own. Poland will probably send somewhere around 20. 
but the first four should should go in uh, in the coming days. Uh, so this this role as a catalyst, you could say, is is a role that Poland has played from the start. They initially offered the mix. Uh, back in uh, March last year, so just uh, a few weeks after the invasion. Uh, back then, the Poles, they wanted um, an international coalition to be created. They wanted to send the MiGs to uh, a U.S. airbase in uh, Germany, uh, Rammstein, and from there uh, it would be transferred uh, as an entire uh, NATO operation with uh, under U.S. umbrella, so to say. Uh, back then, uh, the Western countries were uh, too fearful of escalation, and the plan uh, didn't go through. But one year later, uh, Ukraine has lost additional uh, fighter jets of their own and are in desperate need of having their own uh, arsenal um, restocked. So uh, Poland decided that enough is enough, and uh, the planes will be going. Up. Adam, so I'm going to have to, the, the clock in the corner of the room is doing its usual blinking at me, so I'm going to have to ask you to pause there, but fear not, we'll pick it up next time. There we are. I've had to interrupt Adam almost in mid-sentence, but fear not, if you join us next time, as we hope you will, we'll pick up the story here on Poland Daily History. In the meantime, thank you for watching.